In this video, we will be touring the bedroom that I turned into a YouTube studio. What's up everybody, I'm Jake McHugh and this channel is all about making better videos. I do gear reviews and test videos to help you determine what gear you need to make the videos you want to achieve. If that's something that may interest you, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. So to give you some background of this room, it used to be an exercise room in our basement. It's only about 13 feet long by 10 feet wide, so it's really not that big, but I'm going to show you how I was able to get my editing desk, b-roll cart, and the rest of my filming equipment that I use to make these videos to fit in this room. And I hope that it inspires you for your setup. Throughout the video, I will mention some of the builds that I've made for this room, which I've already had videos for. And I will link them up in the cards and down in the description below. So if you wanna see more details about those setups, make sure to check them out. With all that being said, we are going to take my GH5 and I'm kinda of gonna vlog to show you around the room. Alrighty, so the first thing you'll notice when you walk into the studio here is that we have my B-roll cart right next to the door. And for those of you that don't know what this is, this is what I use to shoot all my product shots here on the channel. And starting on the top shelf here, this is where I put my product. And I have this soft box here that's attached to a microphone arm so I can easily adjust the lighting for the product. And what's nice about the soft box here is it's a very bright and soft light source. So I never really have to worry about lighting with my product shots using this setup here. On the second shelf, we have my charging hub right here, and this is to charge all my batteries through, that I use throughout the studio. And this is really nice because if a battery ever goes dead, I can easily just throw it on here right away and I'm charging all my batteries at once. I have batteries for my so, uh, Sony NFP batteries for my lights. I got batteries for my Sony A6400. I got some for my Panasonic GH5. And I also have a charger here for my gimbal when I use it. And lastly, on the bottom shelf here, we have this tote that just holds a bunch of odds and ends that I use for shooting B-roll. I also have this Lazy Susan right here, and this is a new addition to this setup. So I'm hoping to use this a little bit more in the near future. Alrighty, so next to the B-roll cart here, we have this futon that I'm sitting on. And this is nice when I wanna take a break or if I get sick of sitting at my desk and I wanna edit on this sofa here, I'm able to do so. And I also use it for storage underneath as well. I have this big tote here for some other odds and ends. And I also have my gimbal in its case underneath here. And I got some spare light stands to the far side here if I ever need them. So above the futon here, we have this big bass tapestry. And originally when I was making this room, I was gonna use it for a bunch of bass fishing content for my outdoor channel. So this kind of just serves as a background for those videos. So the wall that's adjacent from the futon and the B-roll cart is what you guys see as a background for the videos on this channel. And on this first shelf here, I have a bunch of vintage lenses and this kind of serves as two purposes here. One, it's a prop for my talking headshots, but I also use these lenses for some B-roll as well. Uh, some notable lenses that I have sitting here. We have the Helios 44M4, and then we also have the Nightcore 50mm f1.8 pancake lens. We also have the Nightcore 200mm f4, and then we also have an Auto Chinon, which is new to me, and I've been playing around with it, but I really like it. I actually have a video coming up where I go over some vintage lenses that I bought recently, so stay tuned for that if you want to check that out. On the second shelf here, we have an old Polaroid camera that I paid $3 for at a thrift store. And this just serves as a prop. And then I also got this lamp from Goodwill for cheap. And again, these just serve more as props. And I sometimes use the lamp to kind of help motivate my lighting for my talking heads. Speaking of lighting, I think there's a few things worth mentioning about my lighting for my background real quick. It's important to note how the walls are painted in the room that you're using to light or shoot your videos in. Originally, the walls in this room were a light blue with a semi-gloss finish, and this isn't really ideal for video due to the fact that a lighter color is gonna bounce light more, and semi-gloss is gonna do the same thing, but at a higher level, and this makes it really hard to control your lighting. Because of this, I decided to go with a bluish gray color with a flat or matte finish, and this helps control it a little bit better. So if you're ever going to paint a room that you're gonna be using for video use, keep this in mind, and kind of stay with the flat or matte finishes and darker colors and stay away from colors that are in the tans, whites, and creams as these will blend with your skin tones and make it a nightmare for color grading. For the background lights themselves, I just used two RGB light panels from GBM and I actually happened to do, did a review on these lights, but I have them attached to my drop ceiling by using small rig clamps. And this allows me to have a lot of adjustability when positioning these lights, but I don't have any floor space taken up 
by light stands, which is really nice because I don't have a lot of space here in this small room. As you can see here, I even went as far as making DIY barn doors out of cardboard and gaff tape. And this just allows me to cut or shape the light to my needs for my background. For my rim or hair light, I have this cheap $20 light tube from Amazon. And this is attached to the drop ceiling once again using small rig clamps. And this is actually really nice for video. It's made for cabinets technically, but it doesn't flicker at all. And it has a really nice battery life to it. So if you need a cheap hair or rim light, I highly recommend this one. If you notice by my rim or hair light right here, I have this large moving blanket and this is attached to my drop ceiling using spring clamps and clothespins. And this is actually a really affordable way to sound treat your room. And this really helps with dampening echoes and reverb. And as if, if you notice over here too, I have one Velcro to my door and I have another one closed pin to my wall. As you can see the way I have this one rigged up here, I'm actually able to fold it up against the wall. That way when it's not in use, I can actually just kind of hide it behind the door when it's open. And then when it comes time to shoot, I can easily just take one closed pin off here, unfold it up against the wall, and then I can clip it on. And this kind of just helps with reflections coming out of the, the back side of the frame up against this wall. And this actually helps a lot with my talking head shot. Moving on up against this wall here, we have my desk setup. And what is nice about this desk setup is we have these pads underneath the desk here called super sliders. And this allows me to move my desk really easily around the room. You'll begin to notice kind of a trend with being able to move everything in the studio, but more on this later. For my computer system on this table here, we have the mid-2014 MacBook Pro, and this model is a maxed out one. And I have this plugged into a IPS panel made by Acer via HDMI. And this is actually a really affordable IPS panel coming in at only a little over $100. And I like having the dual monitor setup because it helps with my productivity quite a bit. Something I added really recently to this desk setup has been this Google Home Mini. And I actually replaced my Bluetooth speaker that was sitting here with this. I recently got this at a thrift store for $12. And at that price, I really couldn't turn it down. I really like listening to audio coming from my MacBook on it and listening to music while I'm working here in the studio. But the biggest feature I've added since getting this Google Home has been this. Hey, turn off studio lights. Hey, turn on studio lights. This has been really handy when setting up the lighting for my videos here in the studio due to the fact that when I'm shooting my videos, I don't have these room lights on at all. And when I am setting up my lights, I don't like having the room lights on. That way I can tell how the lighting is gonna look in camera. And there's been some close calls or some incidents where I might've tripped. So I won't go into the detail there, but this is really nice because it saves me a lot of time and hassle of trying to get around everything and going back and forth from the light switch. I did a video where I break down this whole computer setup. So if you wanna see more details about everything that's on this desk and how I use it, make sure to check it up in the cards or down in the description below. Next in the corner next to my desk setup, we have my one stand. And this is the perfect thing to have for a studio of this size. I have my key light, my camera, my microphone, all on one stand here and it's all on wheels so I can move it in any position in the room. For my key light, I just have another soft box from Amazon here. And this is just a nice cheap one that gives me a large soft light source. And then I actually have this piece of foam cord here. That way I only have a strip of light lighting me. And this just kind of helps preventing spill from the key light getting into my background for my talking headshots. For the camera, I have my Sony a6400 with the flip up screen and I'm running the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 on that. And that's just kind of like the perfect camera setup for a rig like this due to the fact that it has really great autofocus and I can just move it around anywhere, sit down, press record, and we're in business pretty much. For the microphone, I usually run the Rode Video Micro, which is on my GH5 right now. And I, I just plug it into a 3.5 extension cable, which goes straight into the camera. And it just, it's pretty simple, but it plain works. And it's kind of nice and convenient. On the end of my lens here, I have a teleprompter made by Padcaster. And this is actually a pretty affordable teleprompter. And I love this thing so much. It helps me stumble less on my words. And I think it gives my videos a lot better flow to them. And you just use a basic smartphone or cell phone as a teleprompter with this setup here. And I just have an old iPhone sitting on the teleprompter here 
and it basically lives there. That way I don't have to take a phone in and out of there all the time. Once again, I have actually two videos on this setup here, breaking down how I built it and I have all the products on how you can build one for yourself. So if you wanna find out more about that, make sure you check the cards in the description down below. Now would be a good time to explain how I configure every all these different setups in this room for when I'm shooting versus editing. So this is the first layout here, and this is how I showed you guys the tour. And basically what we have is we have my desk up against the wall here. We have the one stand kind of out of the way in the corner, and we have the B-roll cart over by the door. And this is how it is when I'm editing my videos or working at my desk. This next layout here is for when I'm shooting my talking heads. And as you can see, the B-roll cart is basically in the same place, but the one stand and the desk just flip spots. Once this layout is all set up, I will begin my lighting process for my videos. And basically, I start by turning on my key light and making sure that the exposure settings on my camera are pretty close to that. I will then turn off my key light and start playing around with the background lights and making sure I got the brightness and colors that I want. And once I have those set to the way I like in camera, I will then turn on my rim light and my key light once again. And I will adjust the brightness on my key light and my camera settings just to make sure that the lighting ratios are the way that I like it. Once the lighting is all situated, I will then upload my script to my teleprompter and I'll begin shooting the video that I'm working on. And this is the final and last setup that I have for the room here. And this is for when I'm shooting B-roll. The desk and the one stand are in the original positions and I have the B-roll cart in the center of the room. What is really nice about this layout is that if I need a shot to work a certain way in post, I literally can shoot my sh B-roll right here and put it into my computer and make sure that it works out with the speed ramping or whatever I need it to do. Often, I will actually listen to the video in Final Cut Pro while I'm shooting my B-roll. That way, I can listen and decide what to shoot. And this actually speeds up my process or my workflow due to the fact that I'm not planning as much in the beginning stages of creating a video. And for the last wall here, we have my pegboard full of fishing baits and my tackle rack. And like I mentioned before, once in a while I make fishing content for my outdoor channel. And this tackle wall here serves two purposes. When I run out of tackle in these ta this tackle rack here full of tackle boxes, sorry for the mess, when I run out of that, I replenish it with what's on the wall here. But this wall actually acts as a great backdrop for my fishing videos as well. Part of the deal that I made with my parents was if I was going to take this room over for creating content, I had to take my tackle wall from another room in this basement and put it in here. That way I'm not taking over the whole basement. This deal was so easy for me to accept due to the fact that this room is so much better than where I was making videos over a year ago for my fishing channel. I was shooting on concrete floors. There was a sump pump and a water softener in the same room. And I was literally only a few feet away from our air conditioner and furnace. So as you can imagine, the audio did not sound good in there at all. And this is still something I still struggle with. I feel like I feel like I have a hard time getting high quality audio, but it is something that I'm working on. But just being in a space like this just kind of makes it a little bit easier on me. The main takeaway is that you don't need a studio or a setup like this to create. It just makes life a little easier. Like I mentioned about my setup in the other room, looking back at how bad it was compared to this, that didn't stop me from creating. I would stay up late at night because I knew the AC wouldn't run during that time so the audio would sound better, and I would retake the shot if the sump pump nearby would kick on. I worked around the situation. At the end of the day, if you want it bad enough, you will make it work. Don't let the gear stop you and just go create. One last thing before I go, I would like to give a shout out to a few people. First, I would like to thank my girlfriend, Mal, for coming here and helping me put this together on her days off. And second, I would like to thank my parents for letting me do this and for always giving me their endless support in whatever I choose to do. Thank you guys. You have no idea how much it means to me. So that's gonna do it for this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it and got something out of it. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you hit the bell that way you get notified when I drop future videos just like this one here. And last but not least, I will catch you guys in the next video.